Welcome to the Chad Robo Show with uh, myself, Chad Robo Show. And I'm here today with Sean Buck Rogers, U.S. Army Green Beret and combat veteran and the host of the podcast, the FNG Academy. Also the number one best-selling author on Amazon of the new book, Rising Above, which is available on Amazon. And uh, how you doing today, Sean? Good, man. How you doing, Chad? Doing pretty good, bro. I want to start off with uh, just... Uh, introducing yourself a little bit about you and uh, tell us about your book. Yeah. So like you said, my name is Sean Buck Rogers. Um, Go by Buck is a nickname I got in uh, when I joined SF. Um, And then I started, you know, I went special forces, um, loved it, decided I wanted to move on to something else and tried, you know, get a new experience. So I went to the uh, Denver police department. Uh, From there, I got on a small team, uh, citywide impact team. And then, you know, uh, from the events of the, riots and all that decided you know what i want to move on and um try something new and so i just shot completely outside the box and started a youtube channel and wrote a book and um you know i i started that to mainly to help myself and ended up helping other people in the process and so it's just been an amazing adventure um and then yeah the the book to my surprise is people are actually you know getting something out of it and and uh, it's helping so you know, I wrote the book basically just to get my story out is about mostly childhood trauma, uh, the things I endured, and then how I ended up using that trauma uh, to accomplish my goals. And now I'm just on a quest to help guys uh, and girls accomplish their goals and, you know, try to use my past as an example to how, you know, trauma empowers us and not breaks us down. Guys, definitely, definitely get this book. Uh, It's awesome. Uh, I, I, what I'm so amazed about is, you know, we run into so many guys from our communities, uh, from, especially from the, not just the military community, but when you get dig down and get in the special operations community, we have so many things in common, but you and I, I don't know if you know, we had like so many like parallels. Uh, we were both, both in special operations, both combat deploy, both uh, police officers, but we both uh, found our way in those places from just persevering and coming through adverse childhoods and a big part of my story, you know, I grew up in Southern Louisiana. My father was a Marine, both my sons are Marines. I don't know if you know that, but oh, uh, kind awesome. of big Marine Corps family thing. But uh, my father's a Marine who served in Vietnam and he, he came home and just, man, he didn't get the help he needed. And he was just a mess, he was viol- very violent man, uh, alcohol, women, all kind of stuff. So I grew up in a real physical abusive childhood. Um, and, and my, my brother and I, you know, we were like 13 years old. We were like, Hey, we, we're going to join the military to get out of this lifestyle. And, and I always say when I'm speaking, like we were watching this Navy SEAL video and saw this dude coming out of the water with like face painted green and a booty on. He had M16 and twin eighties on his back and seaweed hanging off his head. And I'm like, I want to do that. Yeah. But I don't want to join the Navy. And so we learned about, you know, I wanted to go to Marines because man, my dad, even though he's such a, such a, just a dysfunctional person, the only thing that ever made him proud and happy was the fact he's a United States Marine. And, and so like we wanted to, be Marines because of that. We like make, make this guy happy. Like we, we want something to, to do with that. And we, but we learned about being recon Marines, like super, like again, super young. And we start watching videos. He's, they had the Navy SEAL training video we watch and we were like running and swimming and doing all kind of stuff. And then, cha- you know, tragedy hit our family. My brother was uh, shot and killed. And, and um, we were oh, just sorry, 13 and 14. Oh, well, I was actually 14 and 15. Thanks. Thanks by that, by the way. Yeah. We were four, four, I was 14. He was 15. And, uh, you know, I just went in that deep isolation and I and, uh, decided to uh, just really stay focused on that goal me and my brother set to make, make it a special operations. And 17 years old, the Marine Corps helped me. Uh, a recruiter named Staff Sergeant Brown, I'll never forget his name. He helped me get in the Marine Corps without even a high school diploma, which, you know, 93 is not even just like now. He can't get in the Marine Corps with a high school diploma, but I don't know how I did it, but he got in, got me in. And, and uh, you know, man, it was a clean slate of life, like a fresh chance to – to pave my own way for the first time, you know, uh, as a, as a young adult, 17 years old. And like the only way up or down was, was in my hands. And, uh, and I fulfilled that goal that my brother and I set forth when we were young to, you know, make it into make, be a recon Marine. And, uh, that first year in, I tried out and, and made it. And I think of that, how many people like you and like myself joined the military and, uh, and get for the first time in their life, get the chance to have a clean slate and choose their own destiny. You know, a lot of people, a lot of people know a lot of people came from, you know, very wholesome homes and a great mom, great dad, good upbringing. And it was just, they didn't have to go in the military. It was just a choice they made to serve. But how many people like 
go into military like us. I mean, what do you, what do you think? You think it's like a even ratio or. Uh, I don't, I don't, I, I hope that our stories aren't in even ratio. <laughs> to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, just hearing about your, your brother, it's, it makes me sad because, you know, me and my brother had that tight connection that I'm sure you and your brother did. Yeah. And when you, when you grow up like us, like having somebody that has your back like that throughout all those hardships is on a different level. And, um, so you know, honestly, yeah, I really hope that it's not an even ratio f- for guys like us. Cause even saying he, he, you know, he got shot. Like I got shot at first time when I was eight and the only reason the round didn't go in my chest was because it deflected into the trunk. So man, um, sorry to deflect a little bit, but your story kind of just yeah. hit me. Uh, I'm really sorry about the loss of your brother, man. Like that's, that's one that would, that would have been hard for me to, to deal with. Yeah. I say he was killed, but, um, it was more of an accident. You know, I did, my whole life I kind of, out of anger, I think I said he was like murdered, you know, but, uh, mm. he was, uh, we, we came from a very broken family. And so we were like, we had just spent the weekend together and we went back to other, I think we had spent a week together and we went back to our other family's house and he had a stepbrother that was 11. He was 15 and they got an argument and, uh, they were arguing and the 11 year old picked up a shotgun off the, off the gun rack, a 20 gauge and pointed at him and he tried to knock, he was on the phone he was on the phone with someone saying, Hey, he's pointing a gun at me. And he tried to knock it out of his hand with a fire poker. And, uh, and so I don't know if the kid did it on purpose or did have a reaction or it was an accident, but it was point blank, 20 gauge in the chest and he, he died wow. instantly. And, uh, I mean, I just remember how devastating it was. And like you said, you know, when you, when you're in those, uh, those tough childhoods, um, the siblings bond and oh, yeah. uh, he was the closest person to me in my life at the time. So yeah, going, going into, you know, military and, even even to this day, I look at my life and I'm like, it, it even man, that was so long ago. I'm 45 years old now, and that happened when I was when I was 14. So, you know, 30 years ago, and and it's still like even I was driving one day thinking about it, I start crying. And I mean, yeah. all that time that that hurt, like all these years later, I still feel like I'm I'm a I got you know I'm alive. So I gotta do what we set out to do and be yeah. successful. Absolutely. And, you know, and a lot of us talk about joining the military to, to find that brotherhood and stuff. But at the same time, unless you've had a, a blood brother that you've like had to actually fight, you know, especially adults with, uh, you know, my brothers hit boyfriends in the face with phone books to try and protect me from getting, you know, uh, beat to a bloody pulp. So, um, yeah, that connection is just unreal. And I think a lot of us join the military well, I know for me anyway, when I joined the military, it was like, I just needed a job that wasn't going to, that was going to give me a little more leeway because of that childhood. You know what I mean? Because right. every, everything else, I was just getting in fights and then they're like, whoa, you're a hot mess. Like you can't, you can't function in our environment. So you need to just go. So I was constantly getting either fired or kicked, you know, kicked out of school or whatever it was. So um, I joined the military really to hoping that you know guys like you would be there with me um so that way if if we did fight or if we did do something wrong you know i could look at you and and say i get it you know he's not he's not doing this on purpose he's dealing with his trauma and, and and we would all kind of help each other get through it and um i think that happened for me yeah i mean i mean uh so the military was a clean slate for you kind of place to start start over absolutely yeah it was and, uh, it wasn't it wasn't an easy route for sure i mean there was you know still fighting in basic and, and getting in trouble yeah um, but it definitely it puts the it puts it back on you because it's like hey whether you came from a good background or a, a bad one you guys are all in the same place at the same time yeah and the, the only thing that matters is what you choose to do with that opportunity this episode of the robo show is brought to you by iron-neck.com Iron Neck is uh, the world's number one neck strengthening device. You guys don't know, in uh, 2006, I was in Afghanistan and uh, broke my neck. And uh, if you want to read about that story, a crazy story of how I broke my neck, uh, it's in my book, An Unfair Advantage. You can go and check it out. But coming back from Afghanistan, uh, after that's when I had all my big MMA fights and my neck and the VA wanted to do fusion and I refused to do fusion and I just opted to just strengthen my neck, keep my neck strong. Uh, so since man, all these years fighting through all my fights and MMA and jiu-jitsu, I've always been 
very important that I keep the muscles of my neck strong because the, bro the bones in my neck are broken off and so I don't have that stability. And so neck strengthening has always been a very important thing to me. I've always just improvised ways to do it, using body weight, using different kind of improvised things that I'd make up. But now uh, I don't have to do that anymore because I have an, an iron neck uh, device, which helps me to uh, not only strengthen my neck, but, uh, but do it in a safe way. The, the way the device works is that, you know, it's, it, it's on a rotator. So it, as you move your neck, the, ro the point of uh, where the tension is actually moves uh, around your head. And so super uh, effective and safe way to strengthen your neck. And whether you have a neck injury or not, I think in, uh, in sports or just in, in, in life, it's really important to have a good, strong uh, neck. If your neck's strong, your hips are strong, your body's going to be strong. And so check it out, iron-neck.com. If you enter promo code ROBYSHOW, uh, R-O-B-I-C-H-A-U-X, my last name, you'll get 10% off. And uh, I'm really doing this because I, I love it myself, and I want everybody out there, especially those with bad necks, to be able to take care of themselves. And so I really thought it was a great product to push out and partner with. And uh, these guys are pretty awesome. They're a Texas-based company, iron-neck.com. Right. One thing you learn in the military and uh, is about discipline, and uh, and we talk about this at, at our program, Mighty Oaks Foundation. There's really two type, two different types of discipline: is uh, internal discipline, which is you rely totally on yourself, your own, you know, character and decision making, goal setting, and I'm like, I'm gonna have, to, I'm gonna be disciplined to accomplish this goal, um, which is rare. Um, you know, we come around, come from a bunch of people that see, we see a lot of internal discipline, but. Uh, but it's, it is a rare thing. And there's external discipline, which is imposed on you. And I think the military, when you go through boot camp, for example, you get external discipline. This is the goal. You do this goal. You don't do it. There's consequences. And uh, so, but I believe there's a, there's a transition that takes place when external discipline's imposed on you that creates, if you respond to it well, it creates internal internal discipline that allows you to, to take yourself to the furthest levels you, you possible you possibly could achieve. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Yeah, so, uh, so I mean, I, I really looked at. I, I think I've always been a disciplined person. I don't, I don't know how the where it came from. Uh, you know, how does a thirteen year old from Louisiana that you know eats disgusting food <laughs> and uh, yeah. drink sodas just say, you know, just stop drinking sodas and start eating healthy and start running and swimming? Uh, I don't, I don't know what gave me to do to do that, but uh, but then I also I look at Marine Corps boot camp and the structures and stuff like that and. Uh, you know, I, I I went from, you know, just to someone that would cut any corner it could, and not being on being on a ten mile run by myself, and uh, and I'm like I'm gonna run to that stop sign, and no one's out there looking, and I'm and I, I'm not gonna turn around one foot in front of that stop sign because I decided like that's how far I'm gonna go. I'm gonna actually make good extra feet, few feet. The kind of in, internal discipline that makes you achieve goals, and uh, when you're at home and you're no one's no one can see what kind of food you're gonna eat. You don't uh you don't sneak that snack or anything like that right uh, internal discipline where, where's that where's that come from for you where that uh well i think i think you hit on a lot of it with the what was kind of imposed on me but at the same time there was moments where it wasn't at all imposed and i remember being young and you know maybe like i don't know 10 11 and i would walk the two miles you know two miles i know it's not far but I'd walk the two miles to the bus stop and get on the bus and go to school. And I didn't realize that that was something different. You know, I'd set my alarm, I'd get up, I'd get ready and I'd walk to school or walk to the bus stop. And then I'll, I'll never forget one of the ladies down the street. She would stop and watch me. She's like, she's like, Sean. I was like, yeah. She's like, do you, are you getting yourself ready every day and just getting yourself? I'm like, yeah, of course. Like how else am I going to get there? You know, <laughs> <laughs> my mom's in a, uh, she's sleeping like 20 hours a day. So she's not going to, she's not going to get me there. Um, and she's like, you know what? I have a 16 year old daughter and I fight with her for the first 45 <laughs> minutes of every day for her to get out of bed. She's like, the only reason I can't give you a ride is because we miss the bus every single day. Cause we can't be on time. And here you are just walking by yourself to school. And I was like, yeah. and I didn't realize it was, it was something different until she had said that. And then I, I kind of welled up with pride and I was like, you know what? that is cool. That does, yeah. that does make me feel good that, you know, if you, you, you kind of already have that like task focused, uh, drive in, in the military just kind of made that even better and then it enhanced it. And then it taught you how to, uh, how to do it even, you know, 
with more proficiency. Yeah, so I, I, I kind of bring up all those things and that bring us where we are right now in the conversation to to really answer the question that I know a lot of, I get a lot of people on social media asking me, and I'm assuming you get the same thing, um, is these younger guys who look at you know, where you are, um, you know, where, where I might be in my life and, and guys like in my Glover, for example, another guest I'm recording with today, like these young guys look at that and say, I want to, I want to be like these guys. And uh, how do I get there? And, um, you know, I, I think it comes to, I get a lot of questions like which branch should I join? Should it be a green beret or, or Navy seal or a recon Marine? Like what, they, they come up with all these, these questions. And I, and I think it's uh, I think you and I, could probably probably give some answers to some of these guys listening on on how to get that that discipline in their life and how to pick the right branch of service um that would be a good fit because if you make the wrong choice and join the military and you, you join you sign up for the wrong branch or the wrong job then it, it could change from being a really good experience to a really terrible experience and uh, and I think our young people right now kind of re- they like I want to go in the military, so they just make the decision to be in the military and they recklessly join, and they don't think about what they could be doing every day when they wake up at zero six, yeah. and uh, and and it could be a catastrophic decision for them. It could it could send their life in a, a real bad direction, or they could you know be educated and make the right decision and and uh, really like benefit out of it like you and I have, and so lots of lots of choices out there. You get the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. Uh, can't forget our, our uh, other two out there. The Coast Guard, which is uh, not really DOD anymore. It's a uh, Department of Homeland Security. So, it's, But uh, I, I think most people would still consider it a, a branch of the military. Uh, do it, they do a, amazing work, by the way. Everybody makes fun of the Coast Guard, but they probably get more action, than, uh, especially at peacetime, than any, anybody. And then, um, and then we got another one out there, Space Force. I don't know what they do, but... <laughs> sounds cool <laughs> it sounds cool yeah <laughs> yeah so i mean so you know got some different options out there for the guys but uh that, that are interested guys and gals that are interested in joining the military but um what do you think the most important thing is uh for a young person wanting to join the military like when it comes to decision which recruiter they should go to or well i think first first you need to start by don't not waiting for the military to start making hard decisions. I think that uh, like you, we could, you could get up and I tell guys all the time, cause I, I did the ultra marathon thing for a while. And it's like, go sign up for a, a half marathon, uh, a full marathon, an ultra marathon, regardless, you know, depending on um, where your skill levels are at, go challenge yourself right now. Stop waiting uh, for the, your ship date to have been tested. Like you should, you should have already been, been testing yourself um, throughout your life. So if you want to join the military, start testing yourself right now, whether that's signing up for college, if that scares you or signing up for runs, if that scares you or competing in jujitsu or competing in wrestling, competing in something um, to start dealing with anxiety and stress and fear management. uh, Those things are absolutely huge. And as far as like who to pick for which branch you want to do, you need to be honest with yourself, right? So it's easy to say, well, because I, I get this all the time too. And, and a lot of guys are like, who, who's still getting after it? Like, <laughs> okay, pump the brakes. Like, first of all, war is not something to be glorified. Like I've, I've nearly been shot multiple times and it is not fun, you know? And, yeah. and it's not something that you should, you, you think that you want until you get in it and you're like, wow, this is, you lose a friend, you lose a friend to combat. And all of a sudden you start to realize the severity of war and you will really regret trying to just push for war itself. So right. like, like you said, they need to understand what they're going to be doing at zero six in the morning. And what, what thought of which branch makes them so excited that their heart starts picking up uh, the pace and their breathing starts getting a little labored because they get so excited by just the idea of it. Um, because that, motivation is what's going to carry them through when things get challenging. So I would say, seriously, look yourself in the mirror, have a quiet conversation with yourself about what you truly want to do. Um, and then start looking at the mission sets of each of the different branches. Yeah. That's, you know, yeah. I've met, a, I've met a lot of green braids that say they, they really regret not going Rangers just because uh, the mission set is really what they're wanting to do. And unfortunately, you know, training, uh, four nations is, was not 
really in their wheelhouse. And oh, they want they want to kick indoors and that's it. Shoot guys in the face and and yeah. uh, I mean that's not always the job of a green beret. Right. You know, a lot of I have I have friends that have no combat um, experience and they they did their time and they got out with no combat because they were going to different countries and teaching them how to do mountaineering, how to do uh, shoot, move, and communicate. But they're not in, that country's not involved in war, so. Uh, you really need to think about the mission set and what you want to do uh, in the military. What are your goals from the military? I like you said, don't, don't, uh, you know, don't wait till you go to boot camp to get in shape. <laughs> I mean, I yeah. think a lot of people are joining the military and like, okay, what are they going to do for me? They can get me in mm-hmm. shape. They're going to give me a paycheck. They're going to pay for my college. They're going to educate me. They can do all this stuff for me. I think when you make a decision to raise your hand and, and serve, that like from the beginning, right when you make the decision, you need to realize what you're going to do for the military and what you're going to do to be part of the team. And uh, I think right away, you, you, instead of waiting for the military to get you in shape, uh, that's the time to start getting yourself in shape, uh, preparing yourself, studying the knowledge that you're going to be uh, getting at boot camp. So you're one step ahead of everyone else. Like all, all those types of things, you should start in advance to be the very best, you know, army uh, uh, so, soldier, sailor, airman, marine coasty uh, whatever right. you're going to be or or what do, they, what do they call air force guys cadet space cadet i have no idea <laughs> <A> space force <laughs> guys lucky i think yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. i know air force is airman but the space force guys gotta have something cool but you know what in uh well, what was i gonna say oh that's what was, especially when it comes to special operations um i feel like there's there's certain jobs in in the army right where you sign up and yeah the army got you right they're yeah. they're lucky to get you to fill that spot but when it comes to special operations you're lucky to have them and if yeah. you if you don't think that then you're you're in the wrong game everyone yeah. who's who who becomes special forces um in, in or special operations in any capacity whether it's you know air force or or whatever that's when the game changes and you are lucky to have them like they are blessing yeah. you with the opportunity and if you don't see it that way, then then that's probably not the route that you should pick. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. When it comes to like picking the branch, for me, this is this is what I tell kids is, is uh, don't think about what branch. Like it's easy to get wrapped around. And of course, I'm super prideful because I'm not only am I a Marine and my family's Marines, but uh, we're bred and taught to understand that Marine Corps is the best branch uh, there. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the which may be true. I mean, I don't know how to measure that yet. <laughs> yeah. We, you know, so a lot of people, you know, want to join the Marine Corps because it's the Marine Corps or, or, you know, maybe their dad was in the army or, or, or whatever. I think the Air Force was they're like, oh, the Air Force is going to be easier. And not necessarily, uh, depending on the job. I think you just, you really got to think about, as I said earlier, what you, what are you going to wake up and do at 6 a.m.? And if, if, you know, if you've been playing in the woods your whole life and want to go around and, and, and play army and go sh- and shoot guns and blow things up, then, you know, if that's what you want to do, then you, then probably the Marine Corps or the army is the place to be and be and, and do some, uh, be an infantry or something like that. If you want to jump out of, if you're like, I want to jump out of planes and, and, uh, you know, be, you know, drag, drag a hundred pounds to the ocean in the middle of the night, breathing through a drag rebreather because that sounds fun. Well, good luck. But, uh, but that's, you know, <laughs> and go in special yeah. operations. But, uh, but if you, you know, love building things or, you know, you want to be a logistician or a, a CB or something like that, like, then you pick the job and, uh, because that's where you're going to be most happy at, because it doesn't matter what, what branch of military you have on your name tag. It, it matters what you, you know, you're doing, what you feel like your best job is going to be. And that's where you're going to perform the best. So I always tell guys, Hey, pick the job you want to do first and then find the branch that has that job and then pursue that, that route. And, uh, I think that's what people I mean, end up most fulfilled. Um, my, my son, he's in, he's in, uh, my youngest son just went through Marine Corps boot camp and, uh, Marine combat training. If you, if you're not in the Marine Corps, if you uh, are not infantry, you go to four weeks of Marine combat training, which is like a miniature infantry school. And I'm followed the term of every Marines, a rifleman getting them, uh, getting them the ability to be able to do kind of basic infantry skills. So uh, anyways, he's, he's there right now and he's about to leave for his MOS school crash fire rescue. And that's kind of what I pushed him. You know, he's my dad, my dad was infantry Marine. I was force recon and my son Hunter, his older brothers, Anglico. And, uh, but I'm like, do you really want to do that? Because we did it. Yeah. He was, he's always wanted to be a firefighter. So go mm-hmm. crash fire rescue. So that's what he's doing. He's going to be a crash fire rescue Marine. And uh, I think he's going to be real happy. That's awesome. 
Yeah. I, I couldn't, I couldn't agree more. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, people forget that military is still life and yeah. it's still your life. And if you don't wake up happy doing it every day, then um, you got to change it or, you know, make better decisions in the future. So if you could have done anything, I guess, any other job besides being a Green Beret in the Army, uh, what, what would it be? I mean, even if it's just one or two choices. Yeah, so like I said, hands down, I would pick uh, Combat Controller, CCT, Air Force. Um, unfortunately, I'm not that great in the water. and But if I was, if I could handle it, uh, that would be like my go-to. I love that the way that they are able to embed with other militaries and uh, essentially operate unilaterally you know and they're just it's them they're the only air force guy on the team and they worry about their piece of the pie and um that's it so i just think that's a really cool spot to be in yeah i'd agree they're, they're freaking awesome job uh, we had a uh, you know i was on jace hawk task force and we had a uh, with nsw and uh, and that's who we had for our, our air and for those who the listeners who don't know what cct is, is the air force combat controllers they're essentially uh, JTAC joint terminal air, air controllers. They call in, they put bombs on, on targets for uh, for the teams they're assigned to, uh, and they're just man. Air Force produced some amazing studs, and you know, best back in the late nineties, they were uh, they were recruiting recon marines to go over into the CCT program, and so we lost a lot of recon marines. They were given sign-up bonuses, so they were luring us over with cash because we already had like <laughs> the jump, die, free fall. Uh, oh, nice. so, so they're like, Hey, we don't have to pay for that. So we'll just give you the cash and you come over and, and, uh, and I actually took their screening to do it, but I wanted PJ and they, and they wouldn't give me PJ. They would only give me CCT and I backed out. And, I, and now I'm like, man, I should have did that. I didn't, I just didn't know what it was. You know, I'm like, yeah. well, I, like I didn't know anything about JTAX or anything like that back in the, in the late nineties. And, uh, and, but my buddies that went over, man, they, they all loved the job. They were, you know, now they're retiring out of the air force and, and, uh, being taken care of yeah. air force take, air force takes care of the guys really well and yeah. but yeah it's great great job great job I, I think uh you know so many so many great jobs in the military you know, i'm always thinking about what you know what is something else i might have done done differently so absolutely yeah well uh man it, it's so awesome having you on I, i'd like to keep you know we probably do this again um and uh but i want to before before you hop off i want to make sure everybody knows uh about your book again, remind everybody about your, about your book, Rising Above. You can get it on Amazon. Is it on audio yet? Uh, so working on the audio right now. So I'm, okay. I got two projects going. Um, one is writing the uh, audio book, which is it's going to be like a follow-up okay. motivational book. Yeah. Um, and then second, we'll do an expanded Rising Above uh, on audio. I got to ask, because a lot of my followers are Marines and we, we don't like Marines. I like to read a lot. So <laughs> <laughs> just make sure you talk slow for us. <laughs> yeah. So now it's, it's awesome book. Uh, and it definitely guys check it out and uh, show some shots. You can also listen to him on the, the FNG Academy. He has some great episodes on there. Uh, anything else you need to plug where p- people follow you? Uh, learn uh, about, just, more about you. Oh, I appreciate it, man. Um, thanks for having me on again. And you can find me on Instagram at Sean Buck Rogers. Um, and then YouTube is the FNG Academy. And yeah, if you want to check out the book and let me know what you think, uh, Rising Above's on Amazon, like you said, and um, stay tuned for the audiobook. It is coming, I promise. Yeah. As when you buy these books, one of the things that help us, I'll speak for myself, leave a review. It helps yes. us so much. Yes, leave a review. So, all right, Sean, thanks so much for, for being on, brother. Talk to I you soon. I appreciate it, man. Talk to you soon, right. Chad. God bless everyone.